Good morning, lovelies. So, today I am recording the opening for making this vest and skirt combo. Uh, really, it started out as doing the skirt, and I was originally going to do a, this is how I lengthen my skirts, but then I realized that it's got two giant gores in the back, and that would mess up me being able to cut my fabric. So I ended up lengthening it, lengthening it a different way through a hem method. And then I realized that I had a little bit more fabric left over, so I decided to do the best with it. So this is a video me doing this skirt, which is Simplicity 8747. And I'll, I'll, I'll do a review at of this here in a minute and then I also did this vest again uh, view a which is a deep V reminiscent of uh, Victorian Edwardian 50s style vests so I think this project went really well um, I do recommend sizing up in the skirt because it can come out a little bit tight I sized up from what I usually do I did a size 18 instead of a 16, and it fits wonderfully. Um, the vest, I like to have a little bit tight so that it um, sits relatively well. Uh, so, the vest I've done before. This is an easy to sew, fully lined vest pattern. I will try to remember to link down below which videos I've done of those, because I have done it in. Um, I've done it three times before, and I talk through each step quite fully, quite well. However, this skirt, I've never done. And personally, I like how it turned out. It's, uh, the whole reason I did this skirt is because, well, A, it's a 1950s pattern, but it's like the 1950s redid the Victorian walking skirt. It has two giant gores in the back that create an effect that looks like Victorian walking skirt pleats, but it just kind of hangs well. I did both of these in a cotton flannel, mostly because it was on sale. This is a red check cotton flannel. I think they call this one of their Christmas cottons, but it's very soft, very nice. I haven't washed it yet. It'll probably pill. Most of their cotton flannels do pill. Uh, um, when you're doing this pattern, it just says to pink the edges of the uh, fabric. However, I would recommend doing some kind of seam finish. I ended up doing a zigzag along the uh, like a quarter of an inch in just to try and hold it a little better. Also, um, the gores in the back are held in place by a uh, well, two rectangles meeting underneath the gores. It sits really well, however, it uh, can push out a little bit, so make sure you iron those pleats down, otherwise they won't hold well. I will end up doing the jacket to this at some point. I am kind of looking forward to that because it's got a giant peplum that is mostly focused in the back in box pleats, or at least it looks like it's box pleats. It may just be gross, but it looks really fun. I didn't want to do it in this fabric, even though Joanne's has more. Mainly because I think that would be a little bit too much red check. But even though that's what they could have done in Victorian times. But anyway. So yes. I hope you enjoy watching this video. I am open to comments, questions. Feel free to leave them all down below. If you have any concerns about how I do things, feel free to shout out. I am not afraid of constructive criticism. It helps me become a better seamstress sewer person. So I will see you all next time. Bye. And I am pressing play. 
Okay, so this is the red plaid I'm using. It is a cotton flannel from Joann's. I'm using a seven inch zipper and I'm doing that skirt pattern. I don't decide till later to do the vest to match it. I have already fused the interfacing to the waistband. I have cut out pocket pieces from the same material. I have cut out the front, the back, and the um, center back, which is the gores, which is the whole reason I changed from doing a uh, lengthening the hem an inch to three inches to doing a bias tape hem. By doing the bias tape hem, I only turn in the hem a quarter of an inch, as opposed to quarter, an inch and a quarter. I made this uh, bias tape an inch and a half, and then pressed down a quarter of an inch, and then sewed down a quarter of an inch, so it's an inch in uh, width on the inside. And then I went and hand sewed that hem down. A lot of that I forgot to film because at this point, at that point, I was kind of tired. So here I am marking the back sewing line as well as the back dart. The only two darts on this are back darts, and that's just to help it um, curve over your rumpus because it's relatively fitted at the front and at the hips but the gores give it a nice flare and movement and if you stick around to the end you will see that it kind of looks like a victorian walking skirt i'm calling it 50s the 50s try to do victorian um i really enjoyed this pattern it's a very good history bounding pattern you can dress it up dress it down make it look however you want Personally, I think I look kind of funny in a Christmas, Christmassy way, but yeah. Once you've got those darts sewn, well, I did this out of step. I did the darts first, and then I put the gores onto the back skirt, and then I did the um, center back seam. How they want you to do it in the instructions is the center back seam and then the side panels and then the little flappy thing. I did the little flappy thing last too, but I found it a lot easier and more manageable to do the um, back, this like actual back with the gore before doing the center back seam because it was um, less of a hassle to move around that way. Uh, you do press this seam I am uh, pinning right now to the center back. You press it down and then you iron it to the center back so that it lays somewhat nicely. Um, and this is cotton so you can press the ever living heck out of it and get a good, well, at least halfway decent result. I was trying to pattern match at least a little, which is why the lines somewhat match up, as you can see. They somewhat match up. They're still a little bit off, but hey, nothing is perfect. Uh, so yes, then I do the center back, and then I sew the little flappy thing, which gives you the uh, pleat effect in the back, the gores. Then I sew pockets on only one side because I do not feel like fussing with a zipper and a pocket at the same time. The one pocket works. I just need a pocket for my phone and change and maybe a couple other things. Uh, once the center back seam's done, you press it and press it open so the seam allowance is open. Um, then you sew the flappy bit. Here's what I'm showing you. That flappy bit gets uh, sewn now and then that gets pressed open too so that that seam's open. And then you will attach the front of the skirt also up the front of the skirt and here's where I do pockets I decided that was good there and then I tried to make sure it matched up on the front one which we will, which we'll see next and then once that front pockets done then I use it to uh, help me line up that one side I sew that one side and then I pin the other side and I sew that side till about seven inches from the top and then I insert a zipper. How I did this was a little bit different than how I usually do. 
I pressed the seam allowance and then I went through and did each side separately so that it would lay flat. Once that's done, uh, you will attach a uh, waistband. Once the waistband is attached, you will then go through and hem in any method you prefer. I did did it with bias tape, which actually kind of helps with any of the uh, drooping that might happen because the bias, I don't think I hung this for as long as I should have, but the bias will stretch and move and I'm finding that that is actually might be my preferred method of doing hems from now on because it stretches and it moves and it gives and it lays nicely and it's relatively easy to do. Um, it does make the hem a little more bulky so it may not be great to use on a thicker material like if this was wool I might not have been able to do it to do it this way unless I used a, a cotton a thin cotton and then I probably would have been able to get away with it but yes I really enjoy this skirt it is very easy to move in it's very comfortable if you are into history bounding or vintage inspired or any of that this is a good pattern to use I picked it up for two dollars when Joanne's was having a sale, but I'm a cheapskate, so that's nothing new. Yes, and here's the waistband. I have cut out the marks, uh, the notches, so that it actually lines up. And this is the first waistband I've ever done where it actually all does line up. It sits right, it looks good, it I'm rather proud of it. I did sew a skirt hook on it uh, off camera so that the waistband, you know, cinches since the zipper doesn't go into the waistband, which is actually kind of nice because I can move the skirt hook if ever I lose a little weight or gain a little weight. And then, right about this decision, I realized I had about two yards of fabric. And while I would use some of it to do bias tape for the hem, I had enough to do something else, like a vest. And then my mother advised me to use the material to make a vest with, because it's pretty material and it looks nice. So I went out and got some lining, which for once was on regular price, so I could use a 50% off coupon and some buttons to go with it, and then I decided, well, if I'm going to do a vest, I might as well practice doing bound buttonholes, because my next project is doing my coat, and I am planning on doing bound buttonholes with that, and the last time I did bound buttonholes, it did not turn out well. They were gapy, and I just didn't understand it, so I went and watched, like, four or five hundred videos on bound buttonholes to figure it out, and as you will see in a moment, it turned out rather nice. I have done this pattern before with just thread buttonholes, and while that does work, I find that I kind of like the way this looks with bound buttonholes. It looks nice. I kind of like bound buttonholes now that, you know, they turn out somewhat nicely. So yes, here I am just shoving through the fabric. and. I did forget to clip the excess fabric away, but I also forgot to clip the excess fabric away from the um, sewing of the lining to the front. Yes. So here is what my bound buttonhole looks like. And I like how it turns out. So then I whip stitched those closed, based down the uh, excess on the inside. Uh, sew the uh, fabric to the facing, sew the sides to the front, sew, the, sew up the um, straps to the back to be able to tighten and loosen it, and then I sew the shoulder seams to the fronts and backs, and then I do the lining. Oh, that's the coffee pot. 
The lining is assembled exactly the same way as the front, just without the straps in the back because you don't need straps on the inside. Once you've got the lining assembled, then you can uh, assemble the uh, whole thing. Once you've got the whole thing assembled, then you turn it right side out through the shoulder seams. And then you will sew up the outside material of the sides and then hand stitch the inside. This is a very easy vest pattern to follow. It is one I would recommend for beginners. It is relatively easy and if you're trying to learn how to do clothing, it is a good option to start with. With the princess seams, it is relatively easy to alter. You just add a little bit more, take a little more away. But it is also a vest. You don't need to alter it. You can, as long as it's big enough for you to get your arms through, it usually works. Um, so yes, that's why I also chose to practice bound buttonholes on this. Uh, this is kind of a working mock-up outfit. I will wear this as an outfit itself. Uh, I will be able to pair this vest with black skirts, red skirts, green skirts, white skirts, black skirts. I already mentioned black skirts. But I did a simple, like, medieval-influenced gold button. It's like an antique gold, so it looks relatively nice. I think it looks rather darling. But once that's, um, this is also a good history bounding style top. It will turn any outfit you're wearing into a feel of history bounding. Uh, except the 80s. The 80s didn't really do this. Anyway, so here I am getting ready to sew up the shoulder seams. And then I will assemble the lining, and once the lining is assembled, then I will finish assembling the top. As you can see, on my bound buttonholes, I forgot to clip the excess fabric. If I'd done that, they probably would have laid a little bit better instead of bunching up as much as they did. I also forgot to clip the seam allowance around the front of the uh, buttonhole side. If I'd done that, again, the buttonholes probably would have come out a little bit better, and they would have would have probably been, a, been easier to turn. The nice thing about the coat I'm getting ready to do is it is only three buttons as opposed to four, and I will be taking a lot of time with them, and I will be using steam, and I will be pressing them. Um, one of the other things I have figured out is steam is your friend, and so is pressing. Not just ironing, but pressing. Pressing is where you push down the iron on the fabric and don't move it for a couple seconds, and then lift away. You don't drag, you don't do any of that. So here I'm doing some clipping, but I should have clipped the other side too. And I should have uh, clipped the seam allowance after I'd sewn it. This is just me pinning the ever-living crud out of the front. Well, pinning the lining to the uh, fashion fabric. Once that is done, then I can sew up that, and then, uh, then it's just turning out. Pinning is uh, tricky when it's this many layers. On that front section, I've got the facing. I've got the lining, I've got the interface, and I've got the fashion fabric. So that's four layers to pin through. And even in the best of circumstances, with the thinnest of materials, it can get bulky. So I do recommend um, always using a thin lining because it can get bulky around that. And it, you're trying to pull it all through about two inches which, at the best of circumstances, is difficult. Be kind with yourself, keep in mind what you've got to turn, and just breathe. <laughs> make sure you clip your uh, corners, make, clip, make sure you clip your curves, uh, make sure you press your seams before you turn. That'll help strengthen the seams, because it helps to integrate the seams. 
once that's all done and you've turned it right side out, then you just have to sew up those side seams. If you want, you can sew them all by hand. I personally prefer to sew the fashion fabric by machine. I just go a little bit slower and I do hand sew the inside lining to itself, front to back, so that it all lays nicely. I then go ahead and press the fashion fabric with steam to make sure it will lay flat. There is nothing worse than getting it all done and forgetting to press and it not looking right. I will say I am proud of these corners. They came out sharp. Like real sharp. They look really nice. The whole thing looks really nice. But yes, so all things considered, I really am proud of how this vest turned out. I really like how this skirt turned out. Um, if you have any criticisms, comments, feel free to leave them down below. I am more than I more than welcome them. I will see you all next time. Uh Thank you.